listening to the NFL Draft Bible Podcast Network, part of Sports Illustrated, giving you daily NFL Draft, Dynasty, and Devi Fantasy Football Podcasts. Class is in session. Welcome into the draft seminar presented by Sports Illustrated's NFL Draft Bible Podcast Network. I'm your host, Matt Hicks, the FF Educator, joined as always by my co host, John Lobb, the Gridiron Scholar. And today's rookie profile is Dwayne Eskridge, the explosive, high rising, quickly rising player out of Western Michigan. John, are you excited to break down Eskridge? I absolutely am, my friend, and I love when we get an opportunity to look at these group of five prospects. This young man played at Western Michigan in the MAC Conference. If you love college fantasy football like myself, you've had him on your team, you've seen him, and now the nation is becoming aware of how good Dwayne Eskridge is after the Senior Bowl. Go back to his high school. He's a three-star prospect. And he was a number 23 ranked player in the state of Indiana. When you go back to the high school resume, Matt, you will notice that he was a track and field star. And some athletes can't necessarily take that track speed onto the gridiron, but Dwayne Eskridge does. He won the 100 meter, the 200 meter, and the long jump at Marion Boys Track Regional in 2015 and 16. And he won the 60-meter dash indoor in 2015. And all of that speed, my friends, translates to Western Michigan, and we saw it at the Senior Bowl. So we fast forward. He wasn't an early breakout star. He was one of those players who, if you like the MAC Conference or you like Western Michigan, you knew the name and you saw flashes. But he had never really broken out. And he might have broken out in 2019, but he had a season-ending clavicle injury. He only played four games. So at this point, he kind of falls off the radar. People aren't talking about him in NFL circles. You know, diehard fans, draft Knicks know who he is. But we're not thinking he's the top 100, maybe even not a top 150 wide receiver. But in in 2020... He really came on strong. He only played in six games because of COVID. Remember, the MAC conference started late. They might have been the last conference to kick off, if my memory serves me well, but I'm not a, they're one of the last two conferences. And in those six games, he was spectacular, Matt. 33 receptions for 768 yards, eight touchdowns, and he returned 17 kicks, averaging 27 and a half yards a kick and a touchdown. He was first team all Mac wide receiver and special teams player of the year. I know if you are one of those play um, scouts who love the young breakout age, Dwayne Eskridge is not going to shine for you and you're going to find holes in his game. But that's not the only metric that I look at at a wide receiver. And Matt, I know you like him. What does your film study tell you? Yeah, absolutely, John. Let's talk about that. So it has to start, like you mentioned, with the speed and the acceleration. He speeds up quick, but he accelerates very well downfield. If you're talking about a guy who's going to burn NFL DBs on the fly route, you have to consider this guy running the seam. He could be really dangerous when it comes to the next level. He's got an 86 out of 100 for me in acceleration. It's by far his top trait. I like his athleticism. He's a twitchy athlete. He's fluid. You mentioned the track stars. They can't always translate to the NFL, and it's usually when they're a little bit too rigid. They don't have the fluidity in their hips. Dwayne Eskridge has that. He can win in a straight line, and he can win, uh, uh, you know, moving across the field as well. In fact, you know, that comeback route is probably my favorite route for him, but he runs a nice slant route as well. And let's talk about his route running, John. Athleticism, route running, both have an 80 for me. Really physical hand work. He gets off of release, gets off of press very well, and he does it in part with that quick hand work right off the line of scrimmage. He creates space off the line and downfield. Now, he ran a simple route tree at Western Michigan, but anything they asked him to do, 
he did well. And I give him a 75, John, for his yak ability, the yards after catch ability. He's comfortable with the ball in his hands. Now, he's not the most elusive guy, but I mentioned his hips. He gets defenders to bite with those. He's got a little shimmy, a little shake, as I like to say. And he can contribute after the catch just as much as before the catch. But, John, let's flip on the tape. Let's actually look at uh, some of his traits in work. Oh, we're going to enjoy this, my friend. All right, here we go. We're going to start it off against Akron. And you can see, there it is. There's that slant route. He runs across the field, like I mentioned. Well, John, he doesn't necessarily look like a track star, but he sure as heck runs like a track star. Absolutely. I mean, granted, these are Mac defensive backs, but he blew them away in the open field. And there's another one. Look, look at, at that him. slant Take route. that speed. You know, John, what do I love? I love wide receivers that can break the slant routes, man. <laughs> yes. He's not the most crisp slant route runner, but... Once he gets the ball in his hand and he's going for that open space, he's gone. And that Absolutely. was that's right there. And all of these films are provided by Brandon Lejeune, Devi Deep Dive on YouTube and Twitter. And you can see here, John, there's some athletic. Look at that comeback. Very Ooh, nice cut. Turn it around. That's what I was talking about, man. In, in the yards after catchability, right? It's not going to necessarily break it off for 20, 30 every time. But if you can get five or six extra yards and look at that athleticism, he's not the tallest guy, but he can extend that catch radius enough to kind of, you know, look at times like he's more than 5'9". Absolutely. He plucked that ball out of the air moving as fast as he can with his two hands and exploded upfield. That was a nice catch, Matt. And here he is, John. You have to take into account special teams ability. And when you could be a good kick returner, that's why, you know, we're talking about him as a potential top 100 guy. You know, there's a lot to like about Eskridge's game. He does a lot of things very well. Absolutely, Matt. Draft capital is going to mean a lot with Dwayne Eskridge. I really believe that. I have a third-round grade on him. We are hearing rumors that the NFL is a little more fascinated with him. I expect him to be off the board by the end of the third round. I will not be surprised if a coaching staff or scouting department falls in love and says, let's take him in the second round. I would not be surprised. Because there are a lot of traits that you like. You sh We showed it on the film. He has high grades on athleticism and speed. I would like, to, I think, maybe a little more coaching on some of those routes. At, let's see a little improvement. What I do like, he doesn't run a, a diverse route tree. I agree with you. But, Matt, what's impressive, I saw he ran as the X receiver a ton. He's 5'9", 188. It is not often you see a um, young man at that size run as the X, isolated, and he is beating his opponents at that. And part of it is because of his speed. You have to give him a cushion. So I believe you can put him in different spots in the formation, but he probably will be, need some time to grow. When I put him in my model, obviously the, the production over a period of time is not going to pop. The numbers don't hit my benchmarks that I'm looking looking for, except for one. Look at that, Matt. Yards per reception, 18.5. This young man, he gets the ball in his hands, and he explodes. Lots of yak yards. Also, what I like, as the X receiver, he's not running shortened routes. He's running deep routes often. He did a lot for Western Michigan. Now, he might have only had four or five routes that he mastered, so I understand that. But he's really good at those four or five routes, and they're not just crossing patterns or quick screens. And then you look at the last season, obviously a late breakout, but he had a 63% catch rate, which is incredibly high. And my friends, I watch Western Michigan. I'm not trying to be rude. They don't have NFL quarterback back there. So he's catching it at 63%. That's a pretty incredible rate, and my partner's laughing. But if you watch enough here, he's not getting the ball from Mac Jones and Trevor Lawrence. Let me just say that, and I'll move on. But his team aerial dominator, 44% of the passing yards went through Dwayne Eskridge at Western Michigan. Just incredible. So he has three numbers that pop. Career production's not there because he has a, la a late breakout. One thing that I found in my research, in 2018, he was clocked at 4.33 in the 40-yard dash. 
Now let's sprinkle that with a little home cooking. It still could be a 4-4-0. If he's running a 4-3-9, a 4-4-0 at his pro day mat, and an NFL, NFL team is going to fall in love with a young man who's 5'9", 188. I have him in a Jarvis Landry, Golden Tate bucket. I think there's similarities there to his game with the little Julian Edelman in him. He's a very good player. Draft capital is going to mean a lot. Right now in a dynasty league, Matt, for upside, I love the third round value. Isn't his ADP about th- round three? I love that value. He's a very good prospect, Matt. I absolutely love it, John. You know I'm a big Eskridge fan, and you could put those pencils down because this lesson is over. We appreciate you listening, and if you enjoyed it, make sure you give this episode a thumbs up or a subscribe and a five-star rating, depending on what platform you're listening on.